Hey there YouTube community, welcome back to another episode of Across the Oceans, the YouTube show for underwater image making enthusiasts. This is Matthias from Zurich. And I'm James in Miami. <laughs> It's great to see all your smiling faces again here, guys, for another episode of Across the Oceans. It's your face over there on the other side, James. How have you been, mate? Thanks, buddy. Doing well. Doing really well. Uh, you know, spring has sprung and diving is in full action. Well, we don't really stop here. We don't have a winter season, but... Uh... Yeah, it's been it's been uh, it's been an epic year so far. So really good. How are you? Excellent. Glad to hear that. How is your macro videography getting along? Well, it needs work. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> this is a skill that requires a lot of patience, and I uh, I'm not known for my patience. I'm not known for my patience. That is not uh, a characteristic that has ever been attributed to me. Um, so uh, I, I, it needs work. It needs more work. I don't expect to get it. You know, first time out. Um, but I'm still playing around with it, you know, and I'm having fun. So there we go. That's most important. And you still have a fair bit of time until we get to the Philippines and uh, you'll have to show off the skills that you've learned in the field of macro videography. Exactly. I just don't want to embarrass myself. I'm sure you won't. I'm sure you won't. <laughs> Excellent. So in last week's episode, we actually did talk about tips and tricks on how to get better with underwater. Um, macro videography now in today's episode we'll be talking about the opposite we'll be talking about wide angle shots and specifically about action shots shooting action underwater now i know james that you are a big fan of action underwater right yeah big big time yeah absolutely so things like for example you know the sardine run which we're going back to do again this year sold out trip to south africa um that's really like as much action as you can imagine. It's a, it's a feeding frenzy. That's what you're going to see. Emphasis on the word frenzy. So when I talk about action shots, I'm not talking about, you know, just big animal shooting, like of a whale or of a whale shark or of a any, any species of shark that's just cruising slowly around its habitat and that kind of stuff. That's not action for me. That's definitely wide angle and big animal and all those kind of things. And maybe we could do a different episode about that. I'm talking about fast moving animals. So sailfish, you know, dolphins, orcas. We had orcas on the sardine run last year. Things that are moving at an incredible pace that you're underwater with and trying to capture images thereof. Mm, exactly. Yeah, that's a very good distinction that you're making there. I think that's very important to understand that these are different things and what we're talking about today is really the action part, the action shots and how to get those shots in the best possible way. Now, I would really like to just pass on the word to you because apparently you've got a lot of experience having done that um, sardine run already and having gone through that process of how to, how to film those action shots. So why don't you share some of your best tips with us? Yeah, for sure. So um, definitely a lot of learning was done uh, in 2021 on our first sardine run expedition to South Africa uh, in terms of the, the speed of action, both the speed that you have to have to get in the water quickly and be ready because the action's not gonna wait for you. It's happening and you need to like get in and be ready and, and just go for it and shoot. And also the actual techniques that you would use in the water to capture images that we put into our, our short film run sardine run um for me you know the the key essence there was setting myself up for success like getting good shots on a day started in the in the lodge uh room in in, in the hotel room um really about making sure that i've got the widest angle lens a nice big wide clean dome port and uh, that you know you're set to autofocus in particular because you don't have time to pull focus and work a manual focus lens. You really want to be thinking about it as if you're shooting uh, an action sport like motocross or soccer or something on land, where those photographers, you know, they're not doing manual photo 
focus to get images for, for magazines and, and uh, TV. It's all autofocus and the action's just so fast that you've got to kind of set yourself up for success. So those would be my first points is don't mess around with manual focus, get a nice big wide angle lens, set your camera on autofocus, give yourself the widest possible focus area on your actual, um, on your cameras, LCD, you know, the setup, the viewfinder, or however you want to say. Um, and, and then that's going to sort of help you a lot once the action starts happening. Um, next up, when you're in the water, you know, it's not, you can't, nobody can predict the behavior of a wild animal, obviously, but there are certain things you can look for. So for example, sharks feeding, dolphins feeding, dolphins and sharks don't swim backwards. So you know they're moving in whatever direction their head is pointing. Um, so you can predict that and you can get your camera ahead of it, set up for the shot, shoot in front of where the animal is right now and trust that they're gonna swim into your shot. More times than not, you're gonna get awesome results. What I was doing at the start of the last sardine run was trying to follow a dolphin. And I'm doing this with the camera and it's above me and it's down below. And that footage was absolute garbage. Nobody saw that footage. It lives in a file that I call shame in, in my computer. <laughs> okay, it's just, no, it's just terrible. It's unwatchable, it's unwatchable. So don't try and track a, a fast dolphin. The dolphin is faster than you. You're just gonna end up with images of dolphin butts and that nobody wants to see that. Okay, that's not cool. So get ahead of the, uh, the action, whatever it is, sharks feeding or so on, and, and hold your frame and trust that the animal is gonna swim into your shot, do its thing, swim out of the shot, that's okay. Uh, you know, uh, Matthias put it a really nice way before we started rolling camera of, it, it's like a story in one frame because you have the setup, then you have an entry of an animal and doing what it's doing, and then you have an ending because it, it leaves. So you have beginning, middle and end all in one shot, which is a nice way to put it. Much more poetic than I can muster. So <laughs> thank you for that, Matthias. <laughs> Well, doing my best. And then my last thing as well is it's it's very distracting when you're shooting big action, when you're in there and the adrenaline's going and, you know, the sharks coming in and feeding or we had birds diving from above uh, and, and, you know, um, we had seals coming in, we had orcas, all this kind of stuff. Everything's moving fast around you. It's very, very distracting. Don't forget to be a diver, right? You're still a diver first, and an underwater image maker second. So buoyancy control, monitoring SPGs and pressure gauges, um, making sure that we're you know neutrally buoyant and, and staying together with your buddy. There were times where sardine run, we're in 400 feet of water, but we're trying to be neutrally buoyant at 30, 30 odd feet, right? Well, I'd look down and there'd be a diver in the group that's down at 60, 70 feet on their own because they followed a dolphin down to try and get a shot. There are plenty of other dolphins around at the 30 foot level. So it's just a case of like not getting distracted and like swimming after the action and then forgetting where you are in the actual dive itself. So remember you're a diver first and an image maker second. So that's what I got for you. Wide angle, autofocus, go for it. Absolutely. Um, try and predict the behavior of the animal and get your shot in front of the animal rather than chase their tails. And don't forget to be a diver. I know, Matthias, that you have probably more intelligent and technically minded uh, tips when it comes to settings and so on. Um, but that's that's how we think, and that's why this show works. So I'm going to hand it over to you now. Thank you, mate. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't um, agree um, with the term more intelligent. I think, but from a different perspective, maybe. Let's put it this way. Okay. It's too kind. Um. <laughs> so. To kind of um, talk about also your first point that, were you, that you were making with the autofocus, I think one thing that is very important that is going to help your autofocus to work at its best is to have a closed down aperture um, when you're filming action shots underwater. Because realistically, you're not looking for that very shallow depth of field now. You want to have everything in focus, pretty much everything that is inside you frame you want to have in focus so having an aperture or stepping down your aperture to f8 or higher so f10 11 whatever um, however high your um, your um, lens can go 
and uh, still gets enough light onto the sensor, this is what you wanna do. Maybe you'll have to bump up your ISO in regards to getting still enough light onto your sensor, but I personally wouldn't go below F um, 8.0. It's just gonna give you a uh, much deeper depth of field and therefore everything should be in focus. And that's also gonna help your older focus to work much, much better under these conditions. Now my second tip that I've got for you guys is to use higher frame rates when shooting action underwater. This is for obvious reasons. Shooting higher frame rates will give you the um, opportunity to then slow it down in post-production. So if you're shooting at uh, 60 frames per second or maybe even at 120 if your camera allows for such a setting, then you can slow it down in, for example, a 24 frames per second timeline. You can slow it down considerably and you can even play around a little bit with, uh, with speed ramping. You know, you can have the shark, for example, um, approach the camera very quick. Then you slow it down as it's just swimming, you know, in front of the lens and then speed it up again as it goes off into the distance. Stuff like that is very easily um, done by using higher frame rates. So that's my second tip. Tip number three from a technical perspective is to think about your shutter speed or your shutter angle. Now the shutter speed is what defines how much motion blur you're gonna get in your, in your clips, right? And if you have fast moving objects, there is two ways how you can look at this. If you want to crank up your shutter speed to get nice and crispy looking shots, then uh, you're not going to get a lot of motion blur. But if you want to um, reduce that shutter speed a little bit, you might get or you will get much more motion blur, which can also be a very creative and, uh, and, uh, um, and deliberate choice for what you're trying to capture. So think about that setting as well. Um, so to sum it up, three settings that you should really look at before you get in the water, your aperture, f8 or higher, your frame rates, preferably higher frame rates, and your shutter speed, depending on whether you want to get more or less motion blur in your um, shots, um, you'll choose the appropriate shutter speed there. So that's, those are my three tips that I've got for you guys today for capturing action shots. Awesome. Was that technical enough for you, James? Oh, that was super technical, man. That's how, that's how you roll. <laughs> that's, you know, every time we record these videos, I learn things from you. That's... Well, it, it's actually a two-way street. I also learn a lot of things from you. Because there's a lot of things that you look at from a different perspective that, that what I look at the things, and uh, I learn a lot of things too. Yeah, and, that's uh, good. That's good. I'm very different grateful to you as well. That's oh, good. What are, we, uh, what are we talking about there? next month? We are talking about manual white balancing and how to actually do a manual white balance and why it might make sense to do a manual white balance and not rely on your auto white balance of your camera. Fantastic. Last question mm, for you. Do we have any that. spaces left on our Indonesia trip in 2024? We do have a few spaces left there. Of course, I'll link the trip brochure down in the video description below. So feel free to go and check it out. And uh, if you don't want to miss out on this awesome trip um, to Bali and Komodo, um, make sure to get in touch with either James or myself and we'll set you up with one of the remaining spots on that trip. And uh, I just can't wait for that trip. That's no, gonna be it's going to be amazing. Awesome diving come come the... and dive with us. We're fun. We're great. We're really, you know, yeah. it's, it's going to be awesome And we trip. can dive. And take photos and videos underwater. Absolutely. And we like to teach you as well. We and like tell stories. <laughs> Some of which might even be true. Mm, a tiny bit of it. <laughs> Never let the truth get in the way of a good story. That's what I was always told. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think this basically sums up or brings our video today to an end. Unless you have something else you want to share with our audience today. No, I love it. It's great. You, you're very strict today. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. No, I, I like the structure that we got. You know, it's nice and clean and yeah, crispy. Yeah. I like it too. I like it too. Well, we hope that you enjoyed today's video as always, guys. And if that's the case, please do um, hit that like button and 
if you've not subscribed to both of our channels, well, then it's definitely time to mm -hmm. make up for that and hit that subscribe button on both of our channels. If you want to look at any of the previous episodes that we've recorded within this um this uh, series here that will be, will be linked down in the video description as well. James, as always, it's been a pleasure talking to you and seeing you. Likewise with you guys. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in about a month time again. Until then, guys, keep capturing your underwater adventures and we will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.